Men are good. The CNO Canal and Mail Disposability. Hey, men are good. Yeah, and here we are walking on the uh, CNO Canal towpath. And if you look out that way, you can see the Potomac River through the trees. You can barely see it. In the fall and winter, you can see it a whole lot better. If you look over this way, this is the canal where it used to be. At this point in the canal, they, they don't have it filled with water. But it's been some years since it's been used. But you can see how deep that ditch is. It goes across quite a ways. And uh, it's beautiful. It's a, a beautiful walk, and uh, I'm glad you get to take it with me. So we'll see where it takes us. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the CNO Canal and about its history and about uh, its connection to men and how uh, it shows us a couple of things about men and what's going on for us in today's world. So gynocentrism runs silent and it runs deep. So here we are. Anyway, the towpath that we're on, you can see this is the towpath. It, it runs right next to the of where the canal was. And the towpath is where the mules would pull the barges down the canal all along and they'd have two mule teams of two mules each and the mules uh, would have shifts they'd have shifts so two or three hours the mules would pull the barge and then they'd break and about two or three hours later uh, the mules would change and you'd get the other team out and the other team the team that was pulling would go back in and take a rest on the barge huh Think about that. The mules get a break back and forth. The mules get a break because the guys that built this canal, the guys that dug that thing out with shovels and picks and saws, those guys, guess what? They didn't get any breaks. They worked from sun up until sundown. Think about that. Sun up to sundown. That's a tough day, especially when you're doing very, very difficult labor. I mean, they work their buns off. Anyway, I thought I heard somebody coming behind us. Sometimes the bicycles come behind you and it can be a dangerous thing. Anyway, they worked from, from sun up to sundown and they worked hard, man, with shovels, doing everything you can imagine. Oh, look at that little guy over here. This is the kind of thing you see on the towpath. You see, I'm not sure what that is. I think that's um, Dane's Rocket. Is that what that's called? It's a purple one. I forget. There's a couple, lots and lots of wildflowers here on the towpath. But they worked all day long, all night, no breaks, not like the mules. So who's disposable? The men are disposable. The mules, they're important. Give them a break. Crazy, eh? So these guys work that long day. They work Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday from dusk to dawn. And is that right? Dust to dawn? From sun up to sun down is how they work. And they get paid about two dollars a day. Two bucks a day, which was not too bad in those days. They get a ration of whiskey and they get three meals a day with meat. So that's pretty good, eh? I mean, and most of these guys that did this work were immigrants. And almost all of them were Irish immigrants. In fact, there was a portion of the immigrants that were German immigrants and they had to keep the German immigrants separated from the Irish immigrants because they would fight and fight and fight all the time. In fact, there were even fights among the Irish immigrants because what would happen is the Irish guys, when they came in to get these jobs, they'd pull all the buddies from where they were from in Ireland, all of their friends from that section in Ireland. So each crew kind of was from a different place in Ireland and the competition between those crews was fierce. It was crazy. You know, they <laughs> and fights all the time, fights, fights, fights. And in fact, of course, they, they got off Sunday. So Saturday night was a big night. And what would they do on Saturday night? They would fight. <laughs> they had organized boxing. And of course, they probably bet on it, lost all their money. And they'd spend money on liquor and booze and spent their money there and spent their money on prostitutes. So it's like, it's a tough life, but they had a good time on Saturday night, I'm sure. But couldn't have been easy for these guys. I mean, think about it. 
some of these trees around here are probably not nearly as large as the ones that they took down and had to cut up. Somehow they had to cut the damn things up and they had to um, move them away from the, from the canal. And that's a job, man. Plus, they had to get rid of the stumps. So here are these magnificent, beautiful, huge trees. Leaving a stump from that tree is huge. And what did they do? They had these horse plows. They were specifically made to split stumps. So they'd use teams of horses to split these stumps and haul them away, get them the heck out of here. Now, I often wonder, on the other side of that canal over there, I bet there's a lot of interesting stuff there. But look at this tree right here. Look at this guy. That's probably the kind of tree they were up against. Look at the massive size of that guy. <laughs> and just imagine, by hand, sawing that tree down <laughs> and cutting it up into pieces and then hauling it away. That is tough work. And it was dangerous work too. A lot of guys died on the job. A lot of guys lost limbs. It was a crazy, crazy time. And in fact, the original people who were deciding, well, now how can we do this? How can we, um, do we want paid labor or do we want slaves? And they decided no slaves. You know why they decided no slaves? <laughs> they decided no slaves because they would have had to return the slaves to the slave owner in the same condition they were when they hired them. And they knew that they couldn't do that because this was really dangerous work. So it was much cheaper to what? It was cheaper to use the Irish immigrants. Men are disposable. They're cheaper. Oh my gosh. You know, in the um, early, this was, they built the canal from 1828 until 1850, but I think most of it was, or at least the eastern portion was finished, I think, in the, in the 1830s. But it was about in the 1830s when the laws for, oh, here we got somebody coming, so we're going to turn it off and we're going to get out of the way. We'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're back. That's quite a tree there too, isn't it? Look at that tree. The laws in the 1830s um, were interesting because they just started to make laws about safety in industry. <laughs> and guess what they did? They had these laws that they made in 1833. I think they call them the factory laws in Great Britain. And there were some in uh, the United States. I think Massachusetts was one of the first ones to, to make these laws. And the laws had to do with women and children. You can't work these women and children too hard. You can't... Um, what else? You can't have them do certain things. And so it was all about protecting women and children. To hell with the men. So again, that is another indication. Men are expendable. We don't need to worry about them and their health. Hell, we just work them hard and if they die, they die. I mean, there was an outbreak of cholera while they were building the canal. An outbreak of cholera. Hundreds of men died. Some men basically crawled up to the fields on the other side over there. They crawled up to those fields and just died on the fields. Other men made it a little bit farther, and some men uh, got to a nearby town where they were buried in the church. Uh, there's a Catholic church up uh, uh, about 15 miles from here where they, the, the cemetery still has the graves of some of the immigrants who worked on the canal who died of cholera. But again, you know, no one really worried about the men. They lose an arm, no big deal. They die from cholera, no big deal. Hire another one. No problem, right? Yeah. There, you get a better view of the canal right there and how, how it was. I think it was eight feet deep and 40 feet wide, something like that. I forget exactly, but it's pretty wide and it must have really been difficult to build that thing. I mean, my gosh, what an incredible piece of work those men did. So my hat is off to those guys, and men are certainly good. And this walk has been good too, and I think that's about all I got to say. But you know, oh, here comes somebody. What do we got? Yeah, that's the Amtrak train, you know. It's interesting, the, um, 
B&O Railroad and the C&O Canal had a big battle about who's going to be uh, able to have rights of passage in it. And they finally worked it out. I think Point of Rocks was where they worked it out, where they, they would both share it. So you can see the, the track is right next to here. You know, the other thing about the canal is the uh, uh, during the Civil War, the Southerners would cross the Potomac and attack the canal because it was a big supply line, huge supply line. I mean, they finally had ways to dig coal from the Allegheny Mountains straight down into D.C. In fact, the Dagon Canal went into Washington, D.C., into the city, you know, 17th and Constitution. If you know D.C., I'll put a picture up and show you. There's this little house at 17th and Constitution. And guess what that little house is? It was the Lockmaster's house because the lock went right there and it connected with what's called Tiber Creek. And Tiber Creek was this creek that ran through D.C. It came out on the other side, I guess, about where National Stadium is now. And they've since taken Tiber Creek and um, run it under the city. So Washington, D.C. has a creek running underneath it, and uh, the canal used to go right in front of the um, Capitol, in fact. So lots of things I didn't know about this canal that are fascinating stuff. But anyway, the um, General Lee, when he fought in Gettysburg and he had to retreat, of course, he had to come back and get across the Potomac. Okay. How did he do that? How do, I mean, how do you take cannons and supplies and wagons and thousands of men how do you get them across a river you know just how do you do that and it turns out that there are several spots along the potomac that if you hit it where it hasn't rained for a while and the water is down you can cross over with water up to your knee and so that's where they would cross over that's where and i guess the uh these people knew exactly where to go you know, in order to cross over, and there's a number of points where ferries were were there. It's a beautiful tree there, eh? Yeah, ferries, and uh, uh, but also these crossings where Nolan's crossing. I think Nolan's ferry is one where you could just literally walk across. Apparently, Jefferson walked across Nolan's ferry uh, in order to get to Philadelphia to sign the Declaration of Independence. So, there's a lot of history around this whole thing. It's a fascinating thing, and I hope you've enjoyed the walk. I think we're about finished with that for right now. So uh, let me know if you like these. I'm going to hope to do more. I may take it down to D.C. and do some down in uh, the District of Columbia, and uh, may go up to Sugarloaf Mountain, maybe the Appalachian Trail. Who knows? We'll take walks and talk about men. So keep in mind, men are good, as are you. And uh, let me know if you think of this one. And come see me on Patreon, daggone it. You could use your support. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.